regarding the bowl games sip okay all right so, so on saturday night you saturday you're glued to your chair all day long I Couch, was, chair I, what were you in well i i'll tell you this i watched all of alabama kansas state disappointing yeah, disappointing blowout, blowout predictable predictable we'll get to that 45 20 alabama predictable as you, as you watch the game all those recruiting ratings you think about alabama's talent disparity yeah, there was a talent disparity it was that was very glaring by the end of the first quarter now kansas state went up 10-0 they but, did um then i watched the the michigan <laughs> tcu game in its entirety your boy jim fell down again <sighs> he won in six in bowl games jim well, it doesn't help when your quarterback throws two two pick sixes in the game. J.J. McCarthy did that. I don't know, though. Okay. We'll get to that. We'll get back to that. And then I watched. I could not stay up for the entirety of Georgia, Ohio really? State. No. Couldn't. I that was means out. you didn't make it up to midnight then. On no. New Year's. <laughs> no. I was out. Well, you missed uh, quite a game there, too. Yeah. Ohio State was trailing by one. Right. With a chance to win the game with a field goal. But with the reliable Noah Ruggles, who decided to hit his worst kick of his life <laughs> and Duck hooked it. Duck hooked it into basically a fan in the stadium. When I when I was dozing off, Ohio State was up fourteen. Yeah, and I was thinking, okay, Ohio State. How about this? Uh, devastating loss for Ohio State, obviously. But Michigan. Here's the deal with Michigan. They were spooked, I think, by TCU. You now they you UM has fourth and goal. At the two, early in the game. Fourth and goal at the two, UM. Michigan. Yeah, Michigan. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, okay, they have the they have the offensive line that won the Joe Moore Award for the best offensive line in the country. Okay. They're, they're, they're regarded as the best offensive line in the country. What's Jim do? He runs a trick play. He runs up, you know, so tight end comes around, gets the ball. He's gonna, supposed to throw it to McCarthy. McCarthy's covered, nothing doing, nothing going. Fourth and two, they get nothing. They get nothing. Did you later? Yell, did you yell at the house? I was no, I wasn't yelling because I was stunned. <laughs> I was like, "What are you doing?" And then, and then later, they have fourth and goal, and they they or excuse me, third and goal, and they throw a they throw it out to the flank. They don't try to run it inside. They don't give it to Donovan Edwards or the fullback number 20. Jim was spooked by TCU. TCU. Blackledge said it right before the game started. Todd Blackledge. Yep. Who's, who's the, I think might be the best analyst of it's them It's pretty all. good. College analyst. Better than Herbie? Well, I mean, he that there's a conversation there. Blackledge is really well prepared. He's really, really professional. Better than Joel Klatt. Yeah, it's all the, those three guys are really hard to beat. Yep. It's a pretty much like a horse race that's a three way tie to me. Like they're all so good. Blackwoods right before the game said TCU's much more physical team than people give it credit for. I know what we're gonna do at seven o'clock. We're gonna try to compare Nebraska and TCU. TCU is way better. I mean, it's not even close. They're they have dudes. Well, I don't know why they were five and seven last year. Yeah, I don't. That's the question. I don't understand. That's the question. That. I don't understand. That's some serious underachieving. Because they're good. They are legit. They they're physical. They play the three three five, and they're really physical. I mean, they just hammer you. And they get a their front their front six is active. And I'm telling you, whoa! Come on, do I have to sell it that hard? Michigan on fourth and two, try to trick play. OK, mm -hmm. they weren't thinking, Jake, like you think, oh, that's just a big 12 team. that's not very physical. That TCU's not that team. TCU's not that team. Well, I think K-State's physical, too. Eh, not like TCU. If you watch that title game against those two schools, it was pretty physical. Yeah, they're physical. You're right. The K-State won in overtime. Yeah, Alabama kick, kicked in KSU's teeth. Well, it, Bama's a very talented team. Physical. And I'm impressed that they showed up for a game that wasn't a playoff game. Yeah, they I'm had impressed. their guides too. It wasn't it wasn't pretty off the bat off the bat down 10 0. They didn't have a bunch of guys opt out. Long TD run by Deuce Vaughn. Yeah, yeah. I got the chills. It was amazing when Deuce got loose. Deuce is good. Yeah, Deuce he's is going legit. pro, by the way. Now he's going pro yesterday. Yeah, yeah. He's going pro. But that game ended up being can I say this? The Sugar Bowl? Bad for college football. Why is that? Too predictable. 
you wanted to see Kansas State maybe show that the the recruiting ranking disparity, which was mammoth, doesn't necessarily matter. Well, I would say this then, Sip, to counter that. While that game might have been bad for college football, guess what was great for college football yesterday? What? Tulane beating USC. That's great for college football. So you can take that one and say it's bad. And I say, well, guess what? It's an even wash where Tulane beats USC, USC down down a I bunch of it's points. It's interesting, yeah, because I because I bet the recruiting ranking disparity is massive. Of course, it's yeah. Tulane. Yeah, yeah, it's massive. Now Tulane was you know Tulane came as only as a one and a half point underdog. They were trailing by I think fifteen points in this game or 20, something something like that late, and they came back. Um, get a touchdown, force a safety, and then get a touchdown to go ahead by one. But Tulane wins 46-45. So where that is not for the K-State game is bad yeah. for college football. USC Tulane was a good sign for yeah. college football. And I wouldn't say Alabama, I wouldn't say the Sherman Bowl is terrible for college football, but you just thought K-State, you know, it makes up for not having top 30 classes with strong culture. Defined systems, good coaching, tough hombres. But you know what? Alabama has strong culture, defined system, good coaching, tough hombres. Listen, I'm genuine. And yeah, they have more. They have more talent, much more. It was it was striking because it it was striking. Like you watch the game and you're like, oh god, yeah, Alabama's a lot more talented. And, and I am genuinely happy that they played well. Because I, I, you know, the story is if Bama's not in the playoffs, they don't care about that bowl game. That's kind of what people think. That's good for college football. The Alabama, uh, it is. Yeah, it's good that they showed up. Yeah. I'm with you. Yeah, I'm with you on that. And they had their guys. They did. Bryce yeah. Young was. I'm happy for Nick Saban to show, show, have his guys show up despite not being in the playoffs. Bryce Young was. I mean, he was beautiful in that game. I I had his number somewhere. Um. Jake, Bryce Young, uh, he's going to be a great pro. He's going to be a great Bryce pro. Bryce Young in the game was this. He was 15 for 21, 321 yards, and five passing touchdowns. Yeah, five different guys. Yep. Hit Six five. incompletions, five touchdown passes. How about that for Bryce Young? Hit five different guys. Now, back to – we're skipping around. Michigan TCU. You're right. Two pick sixes by McCarthy were killers. Okay. D winners got one of them, and that corner got one early. Also, what you saw was TCU. You see what they have. Okay. I was talking about their talent. D winners was fabulous in that game. He's a linebacker, number 13. But, but that Quentin Johnson's a, he's a, oh, sure he's fire, a stud. Surefire first the round receiver pick. stud. Is he a first round pick for sure? I th- yeah. I yeah. read up on it. It looks like he's a I surefire. Think he might be a top 10 top pick. 10 pick. Yeah, top 10 pick. Cause, he, Cause he's six, four, two fifteen, And Quentin Johnston. Yep. Johnston runs yep. a, runs a sub four, four, five, 40. <laughs> yeah. He's, um, he's a horse man. Yeah. He's a, he's a fast horse. He is. And, and Dugan. Okay. So what, what does TCU that have that Nebraska doesn't have? They have they have the quarterback who finished second in the Heisman voting, who made a couple incredible throws in that game. By the way, beginning of the season Max was Dugan. not guaranteed as the starting quarterback there. Unbelievable. Max Dugan. He was actually the backup until he beat out the quarterback. Then they have a surefire first round pick at receiver. Quentin Johnston. Right. I mean, Nebraska got a nice receiver in Trey Palmer, but he's not a surefire first rounder. Okay. And then they had a running back who go who went down. Their backup running back's pretty good too, and they're he's a big running back. TCU is a team that would be fine in the Big Ten because they because they're so physical. In fact, Dykes Dykes didn't like all the talk. Sonny Dykes, <clears throat> <clears throat> he didn't like all the talk. He said we heard all week how how the all the Big Ten teams going to run us over. He didn't like. He they said that publicly. I mean, they never trailed in the ball. Game. He said that publicly, and he told his guys in the locker room after the game, "Let me handle the s talking, the bleep. shites talking. There you go, bleep talking. Yeah, the bleep talking. They didn't like. They didn't like McCarthy saying if they if they stay if TCU stays in the three three five, it's going to be a smash fest. TCU didn't like that at all. There's a lesson there. Don't 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 talk like that before a game. 
especially of that magnitude. J.J. McCarthy made a tactical error during the week of that game when he said if they stay in that 3-3-5, it's going to be a smash fest. Yep, that's not very Don't say Why that. would you do that? Don't say that. No, you, I, I watched DCU hit. They were more physical. Dyke said after the game, it was clear who the more physical team was. They were. What, it was, was clear surprising. who the more physical team was. Not surprising. Well, Michigan's physical team. It's, but I told you before the game, TCU is not a typical Big 12 team. Right, but this is a team, though, in Michigan, like you said, had won the award for the best offensive line in the country. I liked they Michigan have a to good win defense. close. I liked them to win close. I thought it was going to be close. Remember, I said it's going to be close. Michigan will be lucky to get out of there. I mean, TCU against Kansas State really impressed me in the loss. Yeah, that was a great game. Yeah. From the text line, someone says, how sick does O'Shawn Mathis feel right now? O'Shawn Mathis was on TCU last season and transferred to Nebraska, where he did not go to a bowl game, and his previous team is now in the national championship. Well, I've asked him for multiple interviews, and I have got nothing. I've got nothing. And maybe that's why. I'm not gonna, I don't want to ask him about that. I mean, I would. <laughs> That'd be part of your interview, I'm sure. It. Yeah, it'd be part of it. That's got to be painful to transfer away and watch your previous team that was 5-7 and seven last year Go to the national championship game. You can't second guess it though, because nobody was picking TCU. I was picked to do much this year. Five. And you seven can always second year. guess it. He's right. going to right now. I'm sure. Yeah. It's unfortunate. 